Tracing the craft and making things in a really specific, measured, planned out way is great. That's what this channel is normally about. But sometimes, sometimes it's awesome just to fly completely by the seat of your pants. And today I'm making the laziest damn mash that I've ever made. It's 50% oats, 50% wheat. We're making vodka. This vodka. How's it going chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse and this is Still It. This is a really interesting video for me because normally I'm very specific about what I make. Uh, I have a plan, I research the outcome that I want and I work backwards towards a recipe. I spend time developing the recipe and calculating the potential ABV that it's going to create in the wash and blah 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 blah. Um, that's not what this video is about. <laughs> I was literally in the shed trying to clean this place up a bit and I looked at a couple of sacks sitting in the corner that I haven't used for a long time. I used a small amount ages ago, they've sat there ever since and I kept planning to plan something for them and it never happened. I had wheat and I had oats and I had the yellow label yeast that doesn't require any mash. No mash whatsoever. <laughs> I think you see where this is going guys. Uh, let me show you the laziest mash ever and then we can get onto distilling and stuff. The two sacks that I had were oats and wheat, both of which had been flecked or flecked. How much did I have? Dunno, probably about 19 kilos of each. What did I do to them? Absolutely nothing. I tipped them into the fermenter. I added in some water before giving it a really good thrashing with a paint mixer. Then I topped it up, pitched the yellow label yeast and gave it another mixing before letting it ferment. I didn't temperature control, I didn't do anything like that. I just let it sit and it was absolutely humming by the next day. In the end, this fermented for almost two weeks, but... Whoops. <laughs> It's passing a starch test and it's fermented down below one, which is great. Carrying on with the lazy theme. We're not gonna do anything weird or crazy. I'm not gonna distill on the grain or anything like that. I'm just literally gonna strain out as much of this stuff as I can uh, and strip it through my 50 liter pot still. A nice way to strain this sort of thing with the equipment I have is to simply siphon out of this and into a bucket. But with the grain basket from the claw hammer still sitting inside the bucket or the pot, siphon into that lift it out and either siphon or tip it into the still afterwards. I figure I've got around four stripping runs to do to get this done so I should get onto it. But first, but first, this smells really interesting and very, very familiar to me. Uh, I want to have a taste and see if my hypothesis is correct on what I think it, what I think it's going to taste like. Hold up, I need a glass. It smells damn near the same as a whip beer. It really does. Which is crazy to me because I thought a lot of that uh, aroma was coming from the yeast. But uh, I guess not because we used yellow label. Anyway, it tastes exactly like a whip there. A little bit of spiciness, a little bit of herbiness, uh, and that sort of round, soft, slick feeling on the tongue with a slight bite. Uh, kind of, kind of almost sour, but not quite sour which is pretty much exactly how I would describe a whip beer. Anyway, I really hope this character makes it through the still, because that'll be fun. Anyway, I'll catch up with you guys when I'm finished with the stripping runs. The still is all up to temperature and we're almost ready to get going for the spirit run. I'm looking forward to this. Generally, when I run this still and I'm making, you know, high ABV neutral of vodka, I use the PAX column plus the CCVM coil. Oh, this guy here. But I've had a few questions lately on my thoughts about the CCVM setup versus just buying a D flag. And I haven't tried it in a while. So I figured seeing as people are asking about it, I may as well give it a whirl. So today we're running the packed column, which is full of stainless SPP. Uh, if you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, it's pretty cool stuff actually. Uh, and you can check the video out up here to sort of see my thoughts on it and a quick down and dirty comparison to copper scrubbies. Uh, I do have a couple of scrubbies at the bottom and the top just to keep the stuff in there. 
And then sitting above the column, we have the D flag. For the last 15 minutes, this thing's been equalizing. So what that means is that uh, all the way up the column to the D flag, it's warmed completely up. The vapor's rising all the way up there, but I'm sending all of the vapor straight back down the column and we're fractionating that column out, uh, ready to start pulling heads off the top. The way I've decided to run it and sort of adjust it to start with today is I have put about as much water as I'm happy to put through the D flag, and I've kept bumping the control for the elements up. That is not, I'm not bumping up the temperature, I'm bumping up literally the amount of energy that's going into the elements. And I found the spot where we're sitting right on the edge of starting to take product off. So I'm sending almost enough energy into the still to push vapor past the condenser, but we're not quite there yet. That's been running for 15 minutes. So now I'm gonna slowly bump the amount of energy going to the elements up until it does start to overcome the condenser and uh, we'll start collecting the four shots. I've now collected 250 mils of four shots. These won't be going back into anything consumable ever again. So they're completely taken out of the chain. Uh, I'm putting them into a container labeled poison, you know, paranoid and all that sort of stuff. And that'll be used for lighting fires, cleaning, whatever other use you have for high ABV alcohol uh, that isn't drinking. But now, over here on the still, I've allowed the speed of the offtake to climb a little bit uh, by once again bumping the amount of energy I'm putting into the pot. I'm going to let this run for a little while and then I'm going to start tasting it to try and take my pick of when the hearts are coming. What I'm looking for is the jagginess on the side of the, your tongue and in the cheeks, uh, that really aggressive nail polish remover kind of thing. I'm waiting for that to dissipate and disappear and to smooth right out. Uh, there is a slight sort of fake estuary weirdness up on the heads on this one at the moment as well. What I'm going to do when those things disappear is I'll take one or two smallish jars of transition cuts just as a insurance policy I guess to make sure that I make the cut in the right place and then I'll just collect straight on into the big glass jar that I'm going to store the stuff in because honestly today we're being lazy and I can't be bothered messing around with 50 glass jars or something it's going to take to put these into 300 to 500 mil containers. Anyway, B-roll. Should we do some B-roll? Let's do some B-roll. Like that, we're done. <laughs> so, uh, just so you know what you're looking at here, team, up this side, we have the heads side of things, and down this side, we have the tails. To catch up on exactly what happened throughout that run, basically collecting this, uh, and this is about yay full, uh, seeing as you can't see inside the stainless, was basically just a big old waiting game, a fair bit of adjusting throughout the day, as water pressure changed. And I have to say, for those of you wondering about the D-Flag versus the CCVM thing, it is a little bit more finicky to really dial in an offtake speed with. And the reason I say that is the only way you can control it is with the amount of water you're putting through it, right? Like that's the only thing that it can do. So if for whatever reason, external factors affect it, you know, three of my neighbors flush their toilet at the same time or whatever. That is quite a big impact on how this still is running. Whereas with the CCVM sort of setup, you can just kind of like whack it up to putting so much water through there, it doesn't really matter if it's a little bit more, or a little bit less, and then adjust it with the height. Anyway, moving on. I keep checking this for flavor, looking for any indication that tails are on their way. And I gotta tell you guys, it went from uh, good, 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 is something wrong? Holy shit, it tastes like ass. <laughs> In a second. I literally switched out of this jar into this thinking, oh, I can probably take a few more liters, but I'll do it in this jar to be safe, so I'm not messing this up if anything goes funny. Yeah, that's how much I collected until it got to the point where, holy crap, nasty. <laughs> uh, just to point out exactly what the, the indications were that I had 
that I was in heads and indications that I had that I was in tails. Um, this jar, I almost just drank out of that. <laughs> yeah, this jar, I'm just gonna keep all of it. That's going in there. The biggest indication that I had that the heads were changing was actually a difference in weight on this run. Uh, and when I say weight, I mean like mouthfeel. Uh, it wasn't a case of real prickliness changing. It was actually quite uh, soft and smooth. I hate using that word because it means so many th different things to different people, but it was quite, there wasn't a lot of jaggy alcohol, even, you know, up high, although I did take 250 mils of four shots. Uh, the difference was that it went from being very, very light and just evaporating to going to a little bit more body, uh, not oily, but just having a little bit of presence and not feeling so volatile in the mouth. And that started to change about halfway through this jar, but I let it go for a little bit longer. Uh, and I'm glad I did, because it meant that I could, could keep this guy here. In terms of tails, the indicator that I got first, the one that sort of just started peeking its head before I switched over, glad I did, uh, was that cementy, uh, I find it hard to describe. It's kind of, it's not acrid, it's not tannic, but it kind of attacks your mouth in a similar way and it, it smells like dry cement. You know, like if you tip a bag of cement out to start mixing it, that, the dust that goes everywhere, even though you should be wearing a mask, <laughs> uh, that sort of smell is what I got off this. Anyway, let me get this stuff out of the way because, you know, we don't need to talk about that yet more. Uh, and I've also realized that what I never do is just have vodka bottled and hanging around to use as vodka because I'm not that excited about it. But at the same time, sometimes I just really want a vodka and Coke and it seems silly that I'm a home distiller and I can't because I don't have it bottled or I've got to go out to the shed and proof it down or whatever. And if I want to make gin from it, that's fine. I can pop the lid on a bottle and make gin at 40%. That, that, that's no problem. Uh, anyway, I don't want to put you guys through that. Uh, so what I'll do is I will put a little thing up here telling you the exact volume uh, that I got, the exact ABV that I got, uh, and what I proofed it down to, and what I bottled it. Um, and what I'll do right now is proof some of this down and, and taste it real quick for you. So this is proofed down to 40% flat. And um, it's like onion. What? Oh. <laughs> It's my hands. I've been cooking. <laughs> Had me worried for a second there. You know what? Uh, let me get a fresh glass and wash my hands because this is this is not good. <laughs> Sorry guys, it's the next day. I got caught up doing uh, chores and things and um, didn't get back out here last night. But tasting this stuff, should we talk about that? Right before I do that though, I need to say huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so freaking much guys. I'm running out of interesting and uh, different ways to say thank you, but trust me, I don't mean it any less. I thank you so much guys. Anyway, uh, tasting this stuff. Should we give it a nudge? I've now got a new glass and a freshly washed set of hands. No onion. <laughs> Marvellous. How do I compare this to other things? Well, I guess the baseline would be um, FFE, Teddy Sands Fast Fermenting Vodka, and Bird Watchers or the Tomato Paste. How does it stack up against those? Uh, on the nose, there is, there is a slight bit of that Whitbeer thing going on. And it has that slight wheat bite to it, which is quite interesting, but quite different than what I'm used to having when it comes to a vodka. So that's interesting, a little bit out of left field, but interesting. Definitely a little bit of um, the phenolic sort of side of things coming through as well, just a touch. And I have to say guys, it's freaking vodka. Okay, so all of these things that I'm calling out are really quite subtle, but they are there. Anyone that says that a vodka is a vodka is a vodka, um, I don't think you've tried enough vodkas or tried hard enough to try vodka. <laughs> anyway, carrying on. So yeah, it's, it's definitely pleasant. What about the taste? Mmm. So this is definitely, I think, the best made vodka that I've made. Uh, it is really quite smooth. Once again, I don't like that word because it means different things to different people, but it's very, very approachable compared to some of the other things that I've made. Not nearly all the way to, you know, full on, completely clean, um, neutral 
like I've had from some other people. To be honest, that's not really my bag. It's, it's not something that I strive for a whole lot. I think it's a very interesting skill to have and the people that can make it like that, that's awesome. Uh, I don't know, if you guys wanna see me try and make something like that, um, let me know, maybe we can do it. But moving on, uh, that whipped beer flavor is still there as well. So both the, the bite and the phenolic side of things are both there uh, and interestingly enough, it does have quite a rich, round, full, mouth body as well that is akin to that almost velvety like thing that you get with a whip beer so that's quite interesting as well now the one downside to it is i'm not getting onion anymore but do you remember when i first used the yellow label yeast to make the uh the the rice product i made rice wine and distilled it if you don't know what i'm talking about check the video out um that had this interesting slightly funky slightly umami-ish kind of thing in it which I was happy it was there because apparently that is a common thing in the baijus or the soju kind of products. There's just a, there is a little bit of it in this as well. So I wonder if it is a yellow label yeast thing. Just a hint of it, not nearly as strong, which is interesting and slightly out of place for what I would expect in a product like this. I don't know. It might be me thinking about things. It might be still having onions stuck in my head from yesterday. Uh, I don't know, and it might, I mean this has only been proofed down since last night, so letting it sit for another two, three weeks might get rid of that as well. I'm not sure, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, but all in all, I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, I gave it to my wife last night and she said, hands down the best vodka I've made, the vodka that she would be most likely to drink, so I definitely will be bottling it and leaving it here to drink. But once again, she's kind of like me and she just likes lots of flavor, even in something like a vodka. So I guess take that with a grain of salt. Uh, in any case, guys, if you've tried something like this, I've heard of people doing uh, breakfast cereal, I've heard of people just doing random pantry raids with yellow label yeast. Please, please, please uh, let us know what your thoughts are on it. But I have to say, man, if you just want to be lazy and throw some stuff in a pot, not boil it, not <laughs> mash it, Nothing, uh, just cold water, pretty freaking cool. Anyway guys, uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, that helps me out a whole lot, it really does. And if you're watching these videos and you're enjoying them and you're not subscribed yet, sort it out team, hit the subscribe button down below, that helps me out even more. And, and, I'll catch you next time guys. Keep on chasing the craft. See ya.